Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And we are here with a different topic today. It's the realizations which I have got since last <laughs> five years of doing consultations. And uh, these are the realizations which you get when your predictions go wrong, right? So as an astrologer, it's uh, very important that we can give accurate predictions. And not only uh, give accurate predictions, but also help the clients in such a way that they feel benefited or rather they get benefited, not just that they feel good, right? So we have the best interests or rather we should have the best interests. But along with it, the problem is this is the material world and astrology is perfect but astrologer may or may not be perfect right because human beings they have a tendency to make mistakes right and the more elevated you are the lesser the blunders that you make but still you will make at least one or two blunders somewhere right except god lord um, Krishna himself, Lord Ram himself, there's nobody who's perfect in this world, right? No human being, right? So it's quite natural that you will also make a lot of blunders when you start giving consultations, right? Uh, so what are some of my realizations? Many of you tell me that sir, I started doing consultations, uh, giving consultations and uh, things are going haywire, right? <laughs> <laughs> I say that you will get married next year and uh, my client tells me that, oh, sir, I, I, I didn't get married and after three years, my prediction failed. What happened? This happened, that happened, right? Well, um, you will face this if you uh, start doing consultations. I have faced it and so many people who watch Exotic Astrology and other uh, channels in YouTube, they face it, right? So, these are some of my realizations which can help you uh, and me and everybody else to understand how to uh, deal with this problem, right? So the first realization that I got or I keep getting <laughs> is that please do a comprehensive analysis before giving a final verdict on a real life situation, right? This is criminal. I see it all the time in YouTube since last five, five, five and a half years uh, since I'm in YouTube. All the time, e even today morning, I when I was reading the comments of my videos, I always see this every day morning. Oh, sir, my this planet is in this house, in this sign, aspected by this planet, conjunct this planet. What will happen, right? Or they ask, okay, my Saturn is with Venus or Saturn is aspecting my Rahu. My Atma Karaka is in debility, right? My Lagna Lord is exalted. My Lagna Lord is debilitated, but it's in the 10th house. My Lagna Lord is exalted, but it's in a Dustana. What will happen, right? My Lagna Lord and Sun and Moon and my Atma Karaka are mutually conjunct or aspecting uh, the end number of possibilities or n number of ifs and buts which can come right with astrology so the problem is when somebody is new to astrology they think that oh i'll just study individual things right so for example you study uh, what's going on with your first house the lagna your lagna lord where's your sun your moon your mars your venus and maybe you get the answer right but it doesn't work like that even for a party, a, any event of life, right? Either it's predicting somebody's marriage or relationships or a promotion or getting a job or termination of job or predicting gains, predicting losses. There are multiple events within the uh, house. Uh, there are multiple uh, houses which are involved with one particular event of life, right? So for example, take the case of marriage. Marriage is the second house and the seventh house and the eleventh house, right? Because why? It's an addition to the family, which is second house, and seventh house is the sanction of the society, and eleventh house is the fulfillment of desire, right? So, if you just predict marriage, 
by seeing the seventh house or by seeing Venus, you are going to end up in a disaster, right? Please do not do it. Even the video that I uploaded yesterday uh, about you know Venus and uh, planets in seven from Venus, I have said again and again and again in so many other videos also, please do not give a final verdict without looking at the entire chart because every house has a say in marriage, but every house has a different different tone to marriage, right? So for example, uh, if you have a very great second house, it may, it may be easy for you to be in the family or be with the in-laws, or it may be easy for your spouse to integrate with your family. But if your seventh house is not good, it may be difficult to continue the marriage in itself because you may have a problem of compatibility or separation with the spouse, right? If the problem is with Venus, it can reflect in some other area of life. There could be lack of connection, although your marriage is going good, but there's no connection. It's just going on superficially like a formality, right? If the fifth house is in trouble, then there could be trouble in having children. Then that could end up causing issues in the marriage, right? If the ninth house is in trouble, then there could be clash of ideals. If the third house is in trouble, then there could be clash of, um, there, there could be miscommunication, right? So if the first house is in trouble, then there could be problems related to the body, right? So there are 12 houses and every house has a say in every area of life, right? Every event of life is dependent on the 12 houses, right? Imagine this is just a small example of marriage that I gave, but it's true even for career, for any area of life, right? So therefore, please do not jump into real life scenarios or real life conclusions without looking at your overall chart. Do not skip the comprehensive analysis. I'm saying it 10 times, maybe 11th time. <laughs> what is the next realization that I got? Please do not ignore Desh Kala Patra. Never, never, never do this, right? What is Desh Kala Patra? Desh Kala Patra basically means like uh, the specific situations which are governing uh, that particular person, right? Who has come to you for a consultation. Which means, so for example, if a person comes to you for a career consultation and imagine the person does not have a job, so that is his Desh Kal Patra, right? Time, place, circumstances. So then you see that next year, uh, his 10th house is getting activated. Now you don't know that he doesn't have a job now. So you see 10th house is getting activated and you are like, wow, you're going to have the best time of your career. You know, you are going to fly. You are going to like, you know, you're going to go somewhere else, right? To be heavenly planets because of your profession, right? You give this prediction. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we we, we uh, heard in exotic astrology, the, this person said, you know, that if the 10th house is activated, it's fantastic for career. And then this person who does not have a job, he's hearing your prediction. And, and the next year, he just starts with a meager position, a normal position, right? And then this person is like, oh my God, what happened? I did not become the king of the world, right? Well, see, whenever the 10th house gets activated, big things can happen in your life. But for a person who is unemployed, even to get any kind of job is itself a very, it's a very big thing especially uh, you know, in countries like India where there's so much unemployment. It can be a very big thing for somebody, right? May not be a big thing for the rich class or the upper middle class, but for the lower middle class or if somebody's in poverty, it's a very big thing. They, they get a source to earn their next bread, right? It's a big thing. Many of us, we might have not had this scenario ever in our life and God forbid we Hopefully never we'll see those days where we don't know if we will get our bread tomorrow, right? So if somebody is not knowing if he or she will get the bread tomorrow morning and then they get a job, it's a very big thing. If you have a job, be grateful for it, right? Yeah, it may sound contradictory, right? 
but yes you've got to be grateful at least you know that i can sustain myself or maybe my family many people do not have that so cherish that if you have right irrespective of what the job is irrespective of you like it or you hate it or whatever doesn't mean you have to stay there the rest of your life but stop cursing yourself because you are in a bad job or in a job that you don't like of course eventually if you don't like the job after one two three years you might try to find another job or you, you may also try to shift your domain see what are your interests passions and then you can align yourself right but the very fact that you have a job itself means you have some good karmic actions right some pious activity you have done because of that you can be rest assured that i am getting this paycheck all right of course again i am not saying that everybody should be employed nobody should be an entrep- an entrepreneur or nobody should be a businessman i am not saying that but i hope you understood what i am trying to tell you right and so therefore for a person who is unemployed the 10th house when it gets activated it might mean something very big which can be for that person to get a job when you say this person will become the king of the world just because his 10th house now that can happen so for example if a person uh, is the chief minister of a state right and then this person his 10th house or his 11th house gets activated then this person could go from the state to a national level right could become a minister in the central cabinet maybe or could become an mp or could become a the prime minister of a country or the president of a country right that's very well possible but you you have to understand the 10th house will function differently for every damn person in this world right it won't function the same way for everybody it, it doesn't mean that if the 10th house is activated everybody becomes a king it doesn't mean that right you need several other yogas and placements and combinations in the horoscope so again coming back to point 1 please do the comprehensive analysis before you jump into conclusions right so this is my second realization never ignore even the place right so for example um james braha sir had come to my channel long time back and i mean he came recently also but if you see one of his recordings which he did with me long time back 3 4 years back he said if a if in the horoscope of a indian man jupiter transits the 7th house the person's married life improves because the person feels very optimistic about his marriage but the same man if he is in america he is in america doesn't mean he is from india but imagine he is born in us and like you know the person is an american by culture then if jupiter transits his 7th house this can ruin his marriage because then he starts noticing other women giving him attention right so now you go to some place in india and then you see oh jupiter transits 7th house very positive for marriage right positive for this positive for that and this westerner comes and asks you and you give him this prediction it can ruin everything right so imagine this person his wife comes and asks you right oh what do you think will my married life improve my husband is having jupiter transit in 7th house and he say oh yeah i don't know you are going to have the best married life right and then he's going on running behind other ladies so how will this uh, wife feel right so there you go so imagine you say this and then this happens so this lady is going to remove all her faith from astrology right she is going to tell that oh all astrologers are a bunch of jokers and rascals and liars and idiots they are like blood thirsty uh, insects who are just sucking money and doing nothing right this is what they will tell and why not should she say like that, right because you gave a prediction and exactly the opposite happened right of course this doesn't mean that she should say like this but in tough times people may say these things right so therefore always 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 focus on the deshkal patra right and third and the most important this is gold i'm telling you always talk to the client if possible 
right? Because you may think, oh, I will get to know everything from the horoscope. No, you don't. Nobody, no astrologer in this world can tell 100% about a person's life from the horoscope. Even if you use numerology, even if you use palmistry along with astrology, you still cannot know more than 60, 70, maybe 75%. Even, not only astrology, if you combine all three. Or maybe if you are extremely, you are like a Shaktavesh avatar of Lord Vishnu, maybe then you can know like, you know, 90%, 95%, which is beyond human capacity. Only an avatar can know maybe. Of course, the avatar can also know 100%. <laughs> but the thing is, we are normal human beings. We, we are not uh, the avatars, right? We are not Parshuram, who is a Shaktavesh avatar, right? Neither we are Lord Ram or Lord Krishna himself. So we can't know. Let's accept the limitation. So whenever I do a consultation, I always ask the person, I mean, if it's a face-to-face -face consultation provided, then I always ask the person, my dear sir, my dear madam, thank you for booking this consultation. Please tell me about yourself. <laughs> Who are you? Where do you stay? What are your values? What do you do? What do you want to do? Please tell me. Only then I can look at your chart. Otherwise, I cannot. If a person tells me, sir, can you tell me this will happen? That No, I just don't do that. Not because I can't, but see, the question is not if you can help, help or predict the person. That's not the question. The question is, what is the quality of your analysis, right? That is the most important question. Anybody can make a prediction, but can you make the prediction in such a way that it will help the person? Or can you tell things which will ultimately benefit the person? That's the question. Right? Anybody can say, Okay, 10th December this year, you will get a child or, you know, 15th September next year, you will uh, get married or, you know, 1st February next year, you'll get a new job. Anybody can say that, right? Not very difficult, but can you tell them? So now if you see that the person has a prominent third house, so what will you tell the person? You will go into IT, you will go into writing, you will go into, uh, you will become a pilot. What will you tell the person? Of course, you, you now you will argue with me. You will say, oh no, but if along with the third, the fifth is also prominent, right? Then maybe it's creativity. Maybe it's Instagram. It's like an Instagram star, right? M making reels. But what if along with that, the 12th house is prominent? What do you say? What do you do? That's very difficult, right? So please talk to the person, understand what the person wants. If the person, because see, whatever you see in the chart, at the end, the final manifestation of that chart, that horoscope, that energy is the person. So when, when you are with the person, please ask this question. Please tell me about yourself. What do you want to do in your career? Tell, tell, tell me, then I will check what is good for you. Among the options that you already want to do, right? And then I will suggest you. Because there are unlimited possibilities in this universe. And there are only 12 houses and 9 planets, right? And adding to that, we are in Kali Yuga. Our brains, as Vyasdev writes in the Shivan Bhagavata, Manda Sumanda Matayo, Manda Bhagyo Padrita. Always disturbed, right? So therefore... We should be humble enough as astrologers to accept the fact that we cannot predict everything and things will go haywire. So the best thing you can do is to directly ask questions to your client directly, right? In fact, there was a consultation when I consulted a lady and I asked her, so madam, please tell me about yourself. And then this lady was astonished. She told me at the end that, my dear sir, the consultation was very good. But the only thing which I did not understand is, why did you ask me in the beginning? Can you please tell me about yourself? What is the use of me coming to you if you can't tell me about myself? 
<laughs> if I have to tell you about myself, then what is the use of coming, right? It's just a farce. It's like a play. It's like a waste of time and money, right? I said, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. So you tell me. So when you are doing a consultation, it is always a two-way process, right? The client is helping the astrologer and the astrologer is helping the client. So many times when you go to an astrologer for a consultation, you can always get this feeling, oh, I am... I have nothing to know. I, I'm just helpless. You know, everything the astrologer will give me, but it doesn't work like that. You also have to give things to the astrologer, which will help him or her to give you the things which you will require, right? So do not make it a one-way street. And you, as a client and as an astrologer, please do not make it a one-way street. If you are a client, you go to an astrologer. Do not make it one way. And even if you are an astrologer, you should directly ask questions to the client. Right? So then this becomes a beautiful experience. It becomes almost like a divine experience where both of them are trying to help each other. Right? So the client is trying to give the necessary information which is required for the astrologer so that the astrologer can help the client in the best possible way. Right? Because there are so many people in this world who will do certain things which will disrupt this process, right? Uh, so then it does not become a one-way, uh, I mean, it doesn't become a two-way street. It's like one-way street. I can speak more about this, but maybe <laughs> it's a topic of some other day. How do people try to disrupt this, right? So please write it down in the comments if you understand what I mean, right? So anyway, so these were my three prominent realizations. The first one, the second one, and the third. The, the third one is the most important, right? First one, always do a comprehensive analysis. Number two, always use Desh Kalpatra. And number three, for the sake of the heavens, not for God, not for the heavens, not for hell, for your and the client's sake, please ask please tell me about yourself <laughs> if you just do this one thing 90 percent of the problems can be solved the rest 10 percent is always up to destiny and god right because if that person who is coming to you as a client is not destined to get help from you you cannot help that person and if you are destined to get some defamy by giving you know wrong predictions, then even that's going to happen, right? You can't stop it. But then our job is to minimize that risk, right? We cannot go 100%, but we can at least try for 70 to 80% accuracy, right? Even if you get 60 to 70%, you have done a good job. If you get it right 80%, you have done a fantastic job, in my opinion. Nobody can go beyond 70, 80%. This is my humble opinion. I may be wrong, you can. Counter me in the comments. You can say, oh, I know this one astrologer who is always right 100%, right? And if he or she is right, that's great. That's fantastic. That's out of the world. That's brilliant. That's superb. But I, with all my humility and knowledge, I am not in that platform. Maybe not now or maybe I will never be, right? So therefore, please make it a two-way process. Help each other. To get things out from the past, from the present, so that you can have a better future, right? Do not make this into a competition. Oh, can you predict, you know, three things from my past? You know, let me test your knowledge. This is not a very good attitude, right? And then the astrologer also becomes defensive. He wants to play this ego game. Oh, you know, you are asking me too many questions. You know, wait, 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 wait. Actually, your career is going to fall in the next three years, you know. So, what happens then? They just behave like enemies, right? So, therefore, do not derail the two-way process. Understand that you both need each other, right? You need each other. You need the astrologer. That is why you are going to the astrologer and the astrologer needs you because he cannot figure out your 30, 40 years from the horoscope. It's just not possible. It's impossible, right? So, therefore, Keep humility and 
understand that we have limitations and that will help you and the astrologer or the client, whichever way you are, to make the best decisions and help out each other. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me, you can go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.